carbon, that glamorous high-tech material from space travel in Formula One, is becoming more and more popular with motorcycles. After racing in sports motorcycles, more and more series bikes benefit from the ultra-light and stable, but also expensive carbon parts. Carbon or not carbon, that is the question here today. More and more motorcyclists want to make their bike a bit more exhilarating, to make it unique, nothing off the shelf. And here, for example, fine carbon fiber parts are a possibility. One saves weight, one has a racing optic. This is known as the magic material from Formula One and MotoGP. For example, this relatively average BMW F800R naked bike can be rebuilt with a real orgy of carbon particles spread over the whole bike. What's it good for? What does it matter? What do you have to pay attention to? All these questions are now being discussed in comparison to a very standard F800R, where you could save a lot of money, but it's just a normal bike. From scooter to sport tourer to enduro, for all types of bikes, there are now carbon parts. For example, Ducati Multistrada or BMW R9T. BMW Sporty Adventure Bike S1000XR loses 12 kilograms with a full carbon cure when you build in all available carbon fiber parts. The carbon parts are also in great demand for the all-rounder, the BMW GS. And Julius Limburg has decades of experience with motorcycles using the black gold. We've been dealing with the production and distribution of carbon parts since 1990, originally for our own needs in racing, then developed for the road. In the course of time, we've developed many parts for racing and for the road and have constantly introduced new manufacturing processes into the series models. BMW F800R series left in blue, carbon version right in red. The carbon fiber parts look much nobler than the plastic from the factory. In some cases, this functionality is improved. For example, as a splash guard for the shock absorber or as an engine protection at the bottom. But pay attention, not all carbon is the same. As an essential feature, I would highlight our finishing in the autoclaves. This finishing allows us to use a raw material with less resin content during production. The result is a very stable component with relatively low weight. This is known from Formula One, where only autoclaves are used. As a further point, I would like to mention, for the motorbike special, the subject of powder coating. Our parts are all powder coated inside and outside. This has the advantage, over the runtime, that I avoid entry of water, of liquids. This means that the mudguard still looks like it looks here now for years. If this is not done, you can see the result here. This is just a carbon part, and after a few years it looks like this. It is not so simple for the layman to distinguish. There are also components on the market where only one layer of carbon is used, so it looks like carbon. On the inside, however, it's made of GRP, that is glass fiber reinforced plastic, a material formerly used for post cladding. But it has the disadvantage of being very heavy. The seal of the Technical Inspection Organization, TÜV, recognizable here on the component, documents and confirms the surface protection, the powder coating of the component, guaranteeing the surface protection over the years and over the runtime. The general operating license is, of course, an important criterion. Is documented by us in each component. A general operating permit, or ABE, means in countries like Germany that I can mount the component on a vehicle and drive it in road traffic. If I do not have this ABE permit, I basically go illegally in an extreme case without insurance, and you have to keep that in mind. Even the nostalgic beauty, the BMW R9T can win with carbon parts as this variant with carbon fiber jewelry from Limburg approves.
Weight savings and protection are indisputable. The look is naturally a matter of taste because carbon does not look classic, but rather futuristic. But the Carbon R9T with the high gloss tank proves that this combination also works. And as strange as it seems at first glance, it is not. I think you cannot be deceived by the optics of the R9T. Although it is a retro look, it has state-of-the-art technology. I think of the upside-down fork, I think of ABS, a very dynamic vehicle. And what fits better than a very modern material like carbon? There is a very noticeable demand for these carbon parts for us, and they sell well. We conduct the carbon test. First, we take the standard blue BMW F800R on the highway. In order to get a better impression of its driving characteristics, it is very agile. The dark plastic parts are appropriate, but not particularly chic. You do not have to be a well-heeled racer anymore to change the carbon. So for supersport motorcycles, it's out of the question, since it's already unbeatable. However, with normal motorcycles, it's prevailed more and more. Because if I take 10, 12, 13, or even 14 kilograms off a normal motorcycle, only by replacing panel parts, then you realize that the motorcycle is much easier to handle, and thus easier to deal with. So we continue on with the carbon bike, which carries on it around 3,300 euros of noble, light, and not quite cheap carbon fiber parts. The large fenders glimmer futuristically and are lighter than the originals, despite the additional protection function. The carbon BMW lies a bit more willingly in curves. It changes from one oblique to the other a bit more nimbly. And although they're not worlds apart, the carbon bike has a noticeably more agile feel. Those who buy cheaply buy twice. Like so much in life, this applies to carbon parts for motorcycles. The quality differences are considerable. Unfortunately, you can only partially see the difference at first sight. In part, they only reveal themselves over the years. In the case of the BMW F800R specifically, I've personally gained the impression that the driving feel is very different. Above all, the look is quite different. If you invest up to 3,300 euros in this motorcycle, then you have something right. Driving feel and optics. My conclusion, again, something learned.